In the United States a common definition of terrorism is the systematic or threatened use of violence to create a general climate of fear to intimidate a population or government and thereby affect political, religious, or ideological change. This article serves as a list and compilation of acts of terrorism, attempts of terrorism, and other such items pertaining to terrorist activities within the domestic borders of the United States by non-state actors or spies acting in the interests of or persons acting without approval of state actors. According to a study based on the Global Terrorism Database, in 2017, 37 of 65 terrorist attacks in the United States were tied to right-wing extremism, 11 attacks were tied to left-wing extremism and 7 attacks were tied to Islamic extremism. U.S. <laughs> totals Recent trends An April 2017 analysis prepared for Congress by the Government Accountability Office found that between September 12, 2001 and December 31, 2016, 73% of violent extremist incidents resulting in deaths were perpetrated by far-right wing violent extremist groups, while 27% were perpetrated by radical Islamist violent extremists. A 2017 report by the Nation Institute and Center for Investigative Reporting looked at the terrorist incidents in the U.S. between 2008 and 2016. It found 115 right-wing inspired terror incidents. 35% of these were foiled meaning no attack happened and 29% resulted in fatalities. These terror incidents caused 79 deaths. 63 Islamist inspired terror incidents. 76% of these were foiled meaning no attack happened and 13% resulted in fatalities. These terror incidents caused 90 deaths. 19 incidents inspired by left-wing ideologies including eco-terrorism, 20% of these were foiled meaning no attack happened and 10% resulted in fatalities. These terror incidents caused seven deaths, according to a report based on Justice Department figures released by the U.S. government January 2018. About three out of four people convicted on charges of international terrorism between September 11, 2001 to December 31, 2016, were foreign-born. According to the Justice Department, 549 were convicted for international terrorism including 254 who were citizens of another country, 148 were naturalized citizens and 148 were natural-born citizens. In a speech before a joint session of Congress on February 28, 2017, President Donald Trump incorrectly attributed these findings to domestic terrorism, rather than to cases in which international terrorists may have been brought to the United States for prosecution. The Triangle Center on Terrorism and Homeland Security and the Police Executive Research Forum conducted a 2015 survey of 382 police and sheriff departments nationwide. Nearly 74% of respondents stated that anti-government violence was their top concern regarding threats from violent extremism, while about 39% stated, "...al-Qaeda-inspired." Violence was their top concern. The National Consortium for the Study of Terrorism and Responses to Terrorism maintains profiles of individual radicalization in the United States, a database containing over 1,800 profiles of individuals radicalized by ideology since 1948. The database shows that from 1948 through 2016, 40.0% of identified extremists were far-right, 24.5% were Islamist and 17.4% were far-left, while 18.2% were «single-issue» individuals. <laughs> Attacks by date 1770–1980 Topic eighteen hundred to ninety nine. Topic nineteen hundred to fifty nine. Topic nineteen sixty to sixty nine. Topic nineteen seventy to seventy nine. Topic nineteen eighty to eighty nine. Topic nineteen ninety to ninety nine. Topic two thousand to oh nine. Topic twenty ten present. Topic 
Attacks by type Anti-abortion violence 1982, three men identifying as the Army of God kidnapped Hector Zavalos a doctor and clinic owner and his wife, Rosalie Jean, holding them for eight days. 1983, Joseph Grace set the Hillcrest Clinic in Norfolk, Virginia ablaze. He was arrested while sleeping in his van a few blocks from the clinic when an alert patrol officer noticed the smell of kerosene. 1984, two men entered a Birmingham, Alabama clinic on Mother's Day weekend shortly after a lone woman opened the doors at 7.25 a.m. Forcing their way into the clinic, one of the men threatened the woman if she tried to prevent the attack while the other, wielding a sledgehammer, did between $7,500 and $8,500 of damage to suction equipment. The man who damaged the equipment was later identified as Father Edward Markley. Father Markley is a Benedictine priest who was the Birmingham Diocesan Coordinator for Pro-Life Activities. Markley was convicted of first-degree criminal mischief and second-degree burglary. His accomplice has never been identified. The following month near Father's Day, Markley entered a women's health center in Huntsville, Alabama see above. 1984, an abortion clinic and two physicians' offices in Pensacola, Florida, were bombed in the early morning of Christmas Day by a quartet of young people Matt Goldsby, Jimmy Simmons, Kathy Simmons, Kay Wiggins who later called the bombings, a gift to Jesus on his birthday. The clinic, the ladies' center, would later be the site of the murder of Dr. John Britton and James Barrett in 1994 and a firebombing in 2012. 1987, eight members of the Bible Missionary Fellowship, a fundamentalist church in Santee, California, attempted to bomb the Alvarado Medical Center abortion clinic. Church member Cheryl Sulinger procured gunpowder, bomb materials, and a disguise for co-conspirator Eric Everett Svelmoy, who planted a gasoline bomb. It was placed at the premises but failed to detonate as the fuse was blown out by wind. 1989, a fire was started at the Feminist Health Center Clinic in Concord, New Hampshire on the day U.S. Supreme Court upheld a Missouri law banning funding of public facilities as related to abortion. The clinic was set afire again in 2000. 1993, Blue Mountain Clinic in Missoula, Montana, at around 1 a.m., an arsonist snuck onto the premises and firebombed the clinic. The perpetrator, a Washington man, was ultimately caught, convicted and imprisoned. The facility was a near total loss, but all of the patient's records, though damaged, survived the fire in metal file cabinets. 1993, David Gunn was murdered by anti-abortion activist Michael F. Griffin. 1994, abortion provider John Britton and James Barrett both killed and his wife June shot but not killed became victims of Reverend Paul Jennings Hill. 1994, two receptionists, Shannon Loney and Lee Ann Nichols, were killed in two clinic attacks in Brookline, Massachusetts, five others critically injured. John Salva was arrested and confessed to the killings. He died in prison and guards found his body under his bed with a plastic garbage bag tied around his head. Salva had also confessed to a non-lethal attack in Norfolk, Virginia days before the Brookline killings. 1996-98, anti-abortion extremist Eric Rudolph cited biblical passages as his motivation for a series of bombings, including Atlanta's Olympic Centennial Park, a lesbian bar, and several abortion clinics. Rudolph acknowledges his attacks were religiously motivated, but denies that his brief association with the racist Christian identity movement was a motivation for his attacks. 1996, Dr. Calvin Jackson of New Orleans, Louisiana was stabbed 15 times, losing four pints of blood. Donald Cooper was charged with second-degree attempted murder and was sentenced to 20 years. Donald Cooper's Day of Violence. By Kara Lowenthal, Choice. Magazine, December 21, 2004. 1997, Dr. David Gandell of Rochester, New York was injured by flying glass when a shot was fired through the window of his home by an anti-abortion Christian extremist. 1997, Eric Rudolph admitted, as part of a plea deal for the Centennial Olympic Park bombing at the 1996 Olympic Games to placing a pair of bombs that exploded at the Northside Family Planning Services Clinic in the Atlanta suburb of Sandy Springs. 1998, three people were seriously injured when acid was poured at the entrances of five abortion clinics in Miami, Florida. 
1998, Robert Sanderson, an off-duty police officer who worked as a security guard at an abortion clinic in Birmingham, Alabama, was killed when his workplace was bombed. Eric Rudolph admitted responsibility. He was also charged with three Atlanta bombings, the 1997 bombing of an abortion center, the 1996 Centennial Olympic Park bombing, and another of a lesbian nightclub. He was charged with the crimes and received two life sentences as a result. 1998, Emily Lyons, a nurse, was severely injured, and lost an eye, in the Christian extremist, anti-abortion, bombing which also killed off-duty police officer Robert Sanderson. 1998, Dr. Barnett Slepian was shot to death with a high-powered rifle at his home in Amherst, New York. His was the last in a series of similar shootings against providers in Canada and northern New York State which were all likely committed by James Kopp. Kopp was convicted of Slepian's murder after being apprehended in France in 2001. 1998, James Kopp killed at least one and went on a series of anti-abortion shooting sprees, both in the U.S. and Canada. 1999, Martin Uphoff set fire to a Planned Parenthood clinic in Sioux Falls, South Dakota, causing $100 worth of damage. He was later sentenced to 60 months in prison. 2000, an arson at a clinic in Concord, New Hampshire, resulted in several thousand dollars worth of damage. The case remains unsolved. This was the second arson at the clinic. 2000, John Earl, a Catholic priest, drove his car into the Northern Illinois Health Clinic after learning that the FDA had approved the drug RU-486. He pulled out an axe before being forced to the ground by the owner of the building, who fired two warning shots from a shotgun. 2001, an unsolved bombing at a clinic in Tacoma, Washington, destroyed a wall, resulting in $6,000 in damages. 2005, a clinic Palm Beach, Florida, was the target of an arson. The case remains open. 2005, Patricia Hughes and Jeremy Dunahoe threw a Molotov cocktail at a clinic in Shreveport, Louisiana. The device missed the building and no damage was caused. In August 2006, Hughes was sentenced to six years in prison, and Dunahoe to one year. Hughes claimed the bomb was a memorial lamp for an abortion she had had there. 2006, David McMenemy of Rochester Hills, Michigan, crashed his car into the Edgerton Women's Care Center in Davenport, Iowa. He then doused the lobby in gasoline and started a fire. McMenemy committed these acts in the belief that the center was performing abortions, however, Edgerton is not an abortion clinic. Time magazine listed the incident in a top 10 inept terrorist plots list. 2007, a package left at a women's health clinic in Austin, Texas, contained an explosive device capable of inflicting serious injury or death. A bomb squad detonated the device after evacuating the building. Paul Ross Evans, who had a criminal record for armed robbery and theft, was found guilty of the crime. 2007, an unidentified person deliberately set fire to a Planned Parenthood clinic in Virginia Beach, Virginia. 2007, Chad Altman and Sergio Baca were arrested for the arson of Dr. Curtis Boyd's clinic in Albuquerque. Baca's girlfriend had scheduled an appointment for an abortion at the clinic. 2009, Matthew L. DeRosia, 32, who was reported to have had a history of mental illness rammed an SUV into the front entrance of a Planned Parenthood clinic in St. Paul, Minnesota. 2009, anti-abortion activist Scott Roeder killed George Tiller in Kansas. 2012, Bobby Joe Rogers, 41, firebombed the American Family Planning Clinic in Pensacola, Florida, with a Molotov cocktail, the fire gutted the building. Rogers told investigators that he was motivated to commit the crime by his opposition to abortion, and that what more directly prompted the act was seeing a patient enter the clinic during one of the frequent anti-abortion protests there. The clinic had previously been bombed at Christmas in 1984 and was the site of the murder of Dr. John Britton and James Barrett in 1994. 2012, a bomb exploded on the windowsill of a Planned Parenthood clinic in Grand Chute, Wisconsin, resulting in a fire that damaged one of the clinic's examination rooms. No injuries were reported. 2015, Robert Louis Deere killed three people in a shooting at a Planned Parenthood clinic in Colorado Springs, Colorado. At his court hearings Deere declared himself a warrior for the babies. Antisemitism 
October 12, 1958, bombing of the Hebrew Benevolent Congregation Temple of Atlanta, Georgia. The acts were carried out by white racists. June 18, 1984, Alan Berg, Jewish lawyer talk show host was shot and killed in the driveway of his home on Capitol Hill, Denver, Colorado, by members of a white nationalist group called The Order. Berg had stridently argued with a member of the group on the show earlier who was convicted in his murder. August 10, 1999, Los Angeles Jewish Community Center shooting in Granada Hills, California of Los Angeles, five people were wounded in the Jewish Community Center and its daycare facility. The gunman, Buford O. Furrow had anti-Semitic and anti-government views. Shortly thereafter, Furrow murdered a mail carrier, fled the state, and finally surrendered to authorities. June 10, 2009, United States Holocaust Memorial Museum shooting, 88-year-old James Wenicker von Brunn, a white supremacist and neo-Nazi, walked into the U.S. Holocaust Memorial Museum in Washington, D.C., shooting and mortally wounding Stephen Tyrone Johns, a security guard. Von Brunn was wounded when other museum guards immediately returned fire and on January 6, 2010, Von Brunn died of natural causes at a hospital near where he was imprisoned awaiting trial. During the investigation it was discovered that Von Brunn had planned to target White House senior advisor David Axelrod leading to increased protection for Axelrod and other steps. April 13, 2014 Overland Park, Jewish Community Center shooting, three killed and one critically injured in shootings at Jewish Community Center of Greater Kansas City and Village Shalom in Overland Park, Kansas. Suspect is 74-year-old Fraser Glenn Miller Jr. On April 27, 2015, Miller told the Associated Press he plans to plead guilty and his motivation was to put the Jews on trial where they belong. October 27, 2018 Pittsburgh Synagogue shooting, a mass shooting occurred at Tree of Life, or La Simha Congregation in the Squirrel Hill neighborhood of Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, on October 27, 2018, while a service was being held. Eleven people were killed, and six were injured. The sole suspect, 46-year-old Robert Gregory Bowers, was arrested and charged with 29 federal crimes and 36 state crimes. Topic. Environmental terrorism University of Washington firebombing incident 1989 California Medfli attack Topic. Islamist extremism February 26, 1993 World Trade Center bombing, New York City, Islamist terrorists detonate a massive truck bomb under the World Trade Center, killing six people and injuring over 1,000 in an effort to collapse the towers. 1994 Brooklyn Bridge shooting a van filled with schoolboys targeted by Muslim extremist. September 11 attacks, 2001 New York City, hijackers steer two planes packed with fuel and passengers into the World Trade Center, killing hundreds on impact and eventually killing 2,606 when the towers collapsed. More than 6,000 people were injured. Washington, D.C., nearly 200 people are killed when hijackers steer a plane full of people into the Pentagon. Shanksville, PA, 40 passengers are killed after hijackers attempt to steer a plane into the U.S. Capitol building. July 4, 2002 Los Angeles International Airport shooting, two people were killed and four others injured by a terrorist who opened fire at the El Al ticket counter. July 28, 2006 Seattle Jewish Federation shooting, Seattle, WA, an angry Muslim American uses a young girl as hostage to enter a local Jewish center, where he shoots six women, one of whom dies. May 2009 Bronx terrorism plot Islamist extremists plan to bomb synagogue June 1, 2009 Little Rock recruiting office shooting, Little Rock, R, a man shoots a local soldier to death inside a recruiting center explicitly in the name of Allah. November 5, 2009 Fort Hood shooting, Feet. Hood, Texas, a Muslim psychiatrist guns down 13 unarmed soldiers while yelling praises to Allah. September 11, 2011 Waltham triple murder, Waltham, M.A., three Jewish men have their throats slashed by Islamist terrorists. April 15, 2013 Boston Marathon bombing, Boston, M.A., foreign-born Muslims detonate two bombs packed with ball bearings at the Boston Marathon, killing three people and causing several more to lose limbs. 
September 25, 2014 Von Foods beheading incident, Bohr, OK, a Sharia advocate beheads a woman after calling for Islamic terror and posting an Islamist beheading photo. July 16, 2015 Chattanooga shootings, Chattanooga, Tennessee, a Muslim commits a shooting spree at a recruiting center at a strip mall and a naval center, leaving five soldiers dead at the latter location. November 4, 2015 University of California, Merced stabbing attack by Islamist extremist December 2, 2015 San Bernardino attack, San Bernardino, California, a couple opens fire at a Christmas party, leaving 14 dead. February 11, 2016 Ohio restaurant machete attack by Islamist extremist June 12, 2016 Orlando nightclub shooting, Orlando, Florida, Omar Mateen shoots and kills 49 people and injures 58 more at a gay bar, the largest mass shooting in U.S. history at the time. November 28, 2016 Ohio State University attack, Columbus, Ohio, a Somalian student, Abdul Arden, who came to the U.S. as a refugee, intentionally rammed a car into pedestrians on a busy campus sidewalk on Monday morning and then began slashing passers-by with a butcher knife, the authorities said, injuring 11 students and faculty and staff members. October 31, 2017 2017 New York City truck attack, New York City, 29-year-old Saifulo Habibulevich Saipov rented a Home Depot pickup truck and intentionally drove it through a bicycle path. He crashed into a school bus and then exited the vehicle wielding look-alike weapons. He was shot by NYPD, eight people were killed and 12 were injured. Left-wing extremism and anti-government September 6, 1901, President William McKinley assassinated by Michigan-born Russian-Polish anarchist, Leon Cholgosh, in Buffalo, New York. October 1, 1910, Los Angeles Times bombing. The Los Angeles Times building in Los Angeles was destroyed by dynamite, killing 21 workers. The bomb was apparently placed due to the paper's opposition to unionization of its employees. The McNamara brothers were found guilty. November 24, 1917, a bomb explodes in a Milwaukee police station, killing nine officers and a civilian. Anarchists were suspected. 1919 United States anarchist bombings September 16, 1920, Wall Street bombing 1969-1977, Weather Underground, a radical socialist movement, committed dozens of bombings and other terrorist activities over this time period. List of weatherman actions August 7, 1969, 20 were injured by radical leftist Sam Melville in a bombing of the Marine Midland Building in New York City. September 18, 1969, the Federal Building in New York City was bombed by radical leftist Jane Alpert. October 7, 1969, fifth floor of the Armed Forces Induction Center in New York City was devastated by explosion attributed to radical leftist Jane Alpert. November 12, 1969, a bomb was detonated in the Manhattan Criminal Court building in New York City. Jane Alpert, Sam Melville, and three other militant radical leftists were arrested hours later. 1971-1975, the New World Liberation Front was a radical left-wing group in the San Francisco area in the 70s who conducted multiple bombings in the Bay Area over a three-year period. They claim almost 50 successful bombings. March 1, 1971, the radical leftist group Weather Underground exploded a bomb in the United States Capitol to protest the U.S. invasion of Laos. June 13, 1974, the 29th floor of the Gulf Tower in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, was bombed with dynamite at 9.41 p.m. resulting in no injuries. The radical leftist group Weather Underground took credit, but no suspects have ever been identified. November 7, 1983, U.S. Senate bombing. The Armed Resistance Unit, a militant leftist group, bombed the United States Capitol in response to the U.S. invasion of Grenada. May 2002, Lucas John Elder rigged pipe bombs in private mailboxes to explode when the boxes were opened. He injured six people in Nebraska, Colorado, Texas, Illinois, and Iowa. His motivation was to garner media attention so that he could spread a message denouncing government control over daily lives and the illegality of marijuana, as well as promote astral projection. 
June 14, 2017 James T. Hodgkinson, a supporter of presidential candidate Senator Bernie Sanders of Vermont was distraught over the 2016 election of President Donald J. Trump, and opened fire on an Alexandria, Virginia baseball field where the Republican congressional team was practicing for the following day's congressional baseball game. Majority Whip Representative Steve Scalise of Louisiana was one of four who were wounded. Hodgkinson was fatally shot by police who arrived at the scene within a few minutes of the shooting. Topic. Palestinian militancy June 5, 1968, Saran Saran, a Palestinian of Jordanian citizenship, assassinated Democratic presidential nominee, Robert F. Kennedy, in the Ambassador Hotel in Los Angeles, California, because of Kennedy's strong support of Israel. Some scholars believe the assassination was one of the first major incidents of political violence in the United States stemming from the Arab-Israeli conflict in the Middle East. March 4, 1973, a failed terrorist attack by Palestinian group Black September, with car bombings in New York City while Israeli Prime Minister Golda Meir was visiting the city. June 1, 1973, Yosef Alon, the Israeli Air Force attaché in Washington, D.C., was shot and killed outside his home in Chevy Chase, Maryland. Palestinian militant group Black September is suspected, though the case remains unsolved. July 1, 1973, in Montgomery County, Maryland, an Israeli diplomat is gunned down in his driveway by Palestinian activist. February 23, 1997, a Palestinian teacher, Ali Hassan Abu Kamal traveled to the top of the Empire State Building where he shot seven people before killing himself. January 5, 2002, Charlie J. Bishop stole a Cessna 172, and crashed into the Bank of America Tower in downtown Tampa, Florida. Bishop was the sole fatality and no one else was injured. Bishop wrote a letter, saying that he was inspired by Osama bin Laden and 9-11 and praised the attacks as a "...justified response to actions against Palestinians and Iraqis," and was acting on behalf of al-Qaeda. <inaudible> <inaudible> Puerto Rican nationalism March 1, 1954, United States Capitol shooting incident Four Puerto Rican nationalists shoot and wound five members of the United States Congress during an immigration debate. October 14, 1969, the Fuerzas Armadas de Liberación Nacional FALN, a Puerto Rican nationalist group, claims responsibility for a small bomb explosion at Macy's Herald Square. January 24, 1975, FALN bombs France's Tavern in New York City, killing four and injuring more than 50. December 29, 1975, a bomb set off by FALN in East Harlem, New York, permanently disables a police officer while causing him to lose an eye. August 3, 1977, FALN bombs exploded on the 21st floor of 342 Madison Avenue in New York City, which housed United States Department of Defense security personnel, as well as the mobile building at 150 East 42nd Street, killing one. In addition the group warned that bombs were located in 13 other buildings, including the Empire State Building and the World Trade Center resulting in the evacuation of 100,000 people. Five days later a bomb attributed to the group was found in the Amex building. May 3, 1979, FALN exploded a bomb outside of the Schubert Theater in Chicago, injuring five people. March 15, 1980, armed members of FALN raided the campaign headquarters of President Jimmy Carter in Chicago and the campaign headquarters of George H. W. Bush in New York City. Seven people in Chicago and ten people in New York were tied up as the offices were vandalized before the FALN members fled. A few days later, Carter delegates in Chicago received threatening letters from FALN. May 16, 1981, one was killed in an explosion in the toilets at the Pan Am Terminal at New York's JFK Airport. The bombing is claimed by the Puerto Rican Resistance Army. December 31, 1982, FALN explodes bombs outside of the 26 Federal Plaza in Manhattan, Federal Bureau of Investigation Headquarters and a United States courthouse in Brooklyn. Three New York Police Department police officers are blinded with one officer losing both eyes. All three officers sustained other serious injuries trying to defuse a second federal plaza bomb. Right-wing extremism and anti-government 
April 19, 1995, Oklahoma City bombing, a truck bomb shattered the Alfred P. Mora Federal Building in downtown Oklahoma City, killing 168 people. Right-wing terrorists Timothy McVeigh and Terry Nichols were convicted in the bombing. July 27, 1996, Centennial Olympic Park bombing by Eric Robert Rudolph occurred in Atlanta, Georgia, during the Atlanta Olympics. One person was killed and 111 injured. In a statement released in 2005 Rudolph said the motive was to protest abortion and the global socialist Olympic movement. July 27, 2008, Knoxville Unitarian Universalist Church shooting, Jim David Adkisson enters the Tennessee Valley Unitarian Universalist Church in Knoxville, Tennessee with a shotgun, killing two and injuring several congregants before being tackled to the ground. Adkisson stated to the police and in a manifesto that he desired to kill Democrats, liberals, African Americans and homosexuals. Adkisson pleaded guilty to the crime in February 2009 and was sentenced to life in prison without the possibility of parole. November 1, 2013, 2013 Los Angeles International Airport shooting, 23-year-old Paul Chancha kills a Transportation Security Administration agent and wounds seven others, three of them TSA agents. Chancha was shot and taken into custody. A note found in Chancha's pocket said he believed he was a patriot and wanted to kill. Patriot. Upset at former Homeland Security Secretary Janet Napolitano, and that he wanted to kill. TSA and pigs. June 8, 2014, 2014 Las Vegas shootings, two Las Vegas police officers while eating pizza in a restaurant and one civilian were shot to death by Jared and Amanda Miller, a married couple, in a suicide attack. A Gadsden flag, swastika and a note promising, revolution, was placed on the deceased officers' bodies. The couple were thrown out a Patriot group defending rancher Cliven Bundy. The Millers were both killed in a shootout with police on the same day. October 22, 2018, October 2018 United States mail bombing attempts, at least 12 confirmed packages containing pipe bombs were mailed within the U.S. Postal Service system to several prominent critics of U.S. President Donald Trump, including various Democratic Party politicians Hillary Clinton, Barack Obama, Joe Biden, Eric Holder, Debbie Wasserman Schultz, Maxine Waters, Cory Booker, actor Robert De Niro, billionaire investor George Soros, former CIA director John O. Brennan, and former Director of National Intelligence James Clapper. On October 26, a 56-year-old man named Cesar Altieri Sayoc Jr. was arrested by authorities in Plantation, Florida in connection with the explosive devices. The suspect has a criminal history. A white van covered in stickers several showing support for Donald Trump was also seized by authorities. Topic. White supremacy 1951, wave of hate-related terrorist attacks in Florida. Blacks dragged and beaten to death, 11 race-related bombings, dynamiting of synagogues and a Jewish school in Miami and explosives found outside Catholic churches in Miami. 1988, Fraser Glenn Miller Jr. a Vietnam War veteran and who according to the Southern Poverty Law Center founded the Carolina Knights of the Ku Klux Klan in the early 1980s served three years in federal penitentiary for trying to assassinate Morris D's founder of the Southern Poverty Law Center. The FBI found a cache of weapons in his home after they used tear gas to drive him out and arrest him. He testified against 14 white supremacists as part of a plea bargain deal. January 17, 2011, 2011 Spokane bombing attempt. August 5, 2012, Wisconsin Sikh Temple shooting, Wade Michael Page killed six people at a Sikh temple in Oak Creek, Wisconsin before being killed by police officers. During the investigation of the crime, police found out that Page was a member of white supremacist and neo-Nazi organizations. The police concluded that racism and ethnic hatred was the main cause of the murders. June 17, 2015, Charleston Church shooting, Dylan Roof carried out a mass shooting at Emanuel African Methodist Episcopal Church in downtown Charleston, South Carolina, United States. The church is one of the United States' oldest black churches and has long been a site for community organization around civil rights. Nine people were killed, including the senior pastor, Clementa C. Pinckney, a state senator. A tenth victim was also shot, but survived. The FBI has not officially classified the act as terrorism, which was met with controversy. 
March 20, 2017, stabbing of Timothy Common, James Harris Jackson, a 28-year-old war in Afghanistan veteran, traveled to New York City from his hometown of Baltimore with the intention of killing black men there. Three days after arriving at New York City, Jackson stabbed Common, a black man, to death with an 18-inch sword. He then turned himself in to authorities. Jackson was charged with one count each of murder in the first and second degrees as an act of terrorism, second degree murder as a hate crime, and three counts of criminal possession of a weapon. August 12, 2017, 2017 Charlottesville attack, a driver drove into the front of a crowd of marchers on the street, who witnesses say were counter-protesting the Unite the Right rally which began the night before. One person died and 19 were injured. Topic. Organized KKK violence Topic. Deadliest attacks The following is a list of the deadliest known single-day terrorist attacks in the United States to date. Only incidents with 10 or more deaths are included. Was previously the deadliest terrorist attack. Topic. Failed attacks November 25, 1864, Confederate Army of Manhattan fires were set at 19 New York City hotels, P.T. Barnum's Museum, and two hay barges resulting in minor damage. Plot to burn down New York City organized by Confederate Lieutenant Colonel Robert Martin failed because the Greek fire incendiary devices were defective and the Lincoln administration had been tipped off by a double agent and intercepted telegraph messages. After the conspirators found out the plot had been discovered they escaped to Canada. Confederate Captain Robert C. Kennedy became the only conspirator apprehended when he was arrested following his return to the U.S. Kennedy was tried by a military tribunal and hanged. September 16, 1920, Wall Street bombing, a suspected attempt to kill financier J.P. Morgan by exploding the first car bomb. Bomb was created by putting scrap metal and 100 pounds of dynamite on a horse-drawn cart and blowing it up on Wall Street. Morgan was out of town but 38 people were killed. Responsibility for the attack has never been firmly established. June 1940, two dynamite bombs were discovered outside of the Philadelphia Convention Hall during the Republican National Convention. A total of seven bombs were discovered in the greater Philadelphia area during this period. November 1, 1950, assassination attempt on President Harry S. Truman by members of the Puerto Rican Nationalist Party at the Blair House in Washington, D.C. 1965 The Monumental Plot – New York Police thwart an attempt to dynamite the Statue of Liberty, Liberty Bell, and the Washington Monument by three members of the pro-Castro Black Liberation Front and a Quebec separatist. March 6, 1970 – Three members of the Weather Underground are killed when their bomb factory, located in New York's Greenwich Village accidentally explodes. WUO members Theodore Gold, Diana Auden, and Terry Robbins die in this accident. The bomb was intended to be planted at a non-commissioned officer's dance at Fort Dix, New Jersey. The bomb was packed with nails to inflict maximum casualties upon detonation. See Greenwich Village Townhouse Explosion. April 1971, pipe bombs found at the embassies of Vietnam, Cambodia and Laos in Washington, D.C. 1972, two Jewish Defense League members were arrested and charged with bomb possession and burglary in a conspiracy to blow up the Long Island residence of the Soviet mission to the United Nations. March 7, 1972, 4.5 pounds of C-4 explosives found on a plane by New York City Police Bomb Squad. March 6, 1973, 1973 New York bomb plot explosives found in the trunks of cars were diffused at the El Al Air Terminal at Kennedy Airport, the First Israel Bank and Trust Company, and the Israel Discount Bank, in New York City. The plot was foiled when the National Security Agency intercepted an encrypted message sent to the Iraqi Foreign Ministry in Baghdad to the Palestine Liberation Organization's office. The attacks were meant to coincide with visit of Israeli Prime Minister Golda Meir. Khalid Da'am al-Jawari of the Black September was convicted on charges relating to the attacks in 1993 and was released to immigration authorities in 2009. September 22, 1975, Sarah Jane Moore tries to assassinate President Gerald Ford outside of the St. Francis Hotel in San Francisco. The attempt fails when a bystander grabs her arm and deflects the shot. 
Moore has stated the motive was to create chaos to bring the winds of change because the government had declared war on the left wing. 1984, according to Oregon law enforcement there was an abortive plot by the Ranishi cult to murder United States Attorney for Oregon, Charles Turner. April 1985, the FBI arrested several members of a Sikh terrorist group who were plotting to kill Indian PM Rajiv Gandhi when he visited New York in June. April 12, 1988, Yu Kakumura, a member of the Japanese Red Army, is arrested with three pipe bombs on the New Jersey Turnpike. According to prosecutors, Kakumura planned to bomb a military recruitment office in the Veterans Administration building in Lower Manhattan on April 14, the anniversary of the U.S. raid on Libya. February 26, 1993, 1993 World Trade Center bombing, Ramzi Youssef, a member of Al-Qaeda, masterminds the truck bombing of the World Trade Center. The bomb is meant to destabilize the foundation of the building, causing it to collapse and destroy surrounding buildings, leading to mass casualties. It failed to do so, but the detonation killed six people and injured more than 1,000. June 1993, New York City landmark bomb plot. Followers of radical cleric Omar Abdul Rahman were arrested while planning to bomb landmarks in New York City, including the UN headquarters. August 1994, two right-wing extremists, Douglas Baker and Leroy Wheeler, both members of the Minnesota Patriots Council, are arrested for making ricin, a deadly toxin. The two will later be convicted of attempting to poison federal agents. March 1995, Charles Ray Polk is arrested while attempting to buy a quantity of plastic explosives and machine guns in order to assassinate four police officers and a female judge, and to use in a planned bombing of the IRS offices in Tyler, Texas. November 9, 1995, Willie Ray Lampley, a self-proclaimed prophet, along with his wife Cecilia and a family friend John Dare Baird, were arrested for a plot to bomb numerous targets, including the Southern Poverty Law Center in Montgomery, Alabama, the Anti-Defamation League offices in Dallas and Houston, Texas, as well as a number of gay bars and abortion clinics. December 1995, tax protesters Joseph Martin Bailey and Ellis Edward Hurst attempt to blow up the Internal Revenue Service building in Reno, Nevada with a 100-pound ANFO bomb. April 1996, anti-government activist and survivalist Ray Hamblin is arrested after authorities find 460 pounds of the high-explosive Tovex, 746 pounds of ANFO blasting agent, and 15 homemade hand grenades on his property in Hood River, Oregon during an investigation into a series of explosions in his storage sheds. July 1996, 12 members of an Arizona militia group called the Viper Team are arrested on federal conspiracy, weapons and explosive charges after planning to bomb a number of federal office buildings, including one that houses the Office of the Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco and Firearms and the FBI. July 1996, Washington State Militia leader John Pittner and seven others are arrested on weapons and explosives charges in connection with a plot to build pipe bombs for a confrontation with the federal government. Pittner and four others will be convicted on weapons charges, while conspiracy charges against all eight will end in a mistrial. Pittner will later be retried on that charge, convicted and sentenced to four years in prison. October 1996, seven members of the Mountaineer Militia are arrested in a plot to blow up the FBI's National Criminal Justice Information Services Division in Clarksburg, West Virginia. In 1998, leader Floyd Ray Looker will be sentenced to 18 years in prison. March 17, 1997, anti-abortion extremist Peter Howard puts 13 gas cans and three propane tanks in his truck, and drives it through the door of a California women's clinic in a failed attempt to firebomb the clinic. September 1999, anti-abortion extremist Clayton Lee Wagner was pulled over by the Pennsylvania State Police, but fled into the woods and evaded capture, leaving behind a stolen car that contained firearms, explosives, fake ID, and a list of abortion clinics. Later in September 1999, while on a self-described mission from God, he took his wife and their nine children on a cross-country road trip headed west in a stolen Winnebago, planning to murder various abortion doctors, beginning with one in Seattle, Washington. However, after crossing into Illinois his vehicle broke down, and Wagner was arrested when Illinois State Police stopped to investigate. Wagner was convicted on charges of interstate transportation of a stolen motor vehicle and for being a convicted felon in possession of firearms. Wagner later escaped and used a cross-country crime spree to continue to fund his anti-abortion mission. 
January 1, 2000, 2000 Millennium Attack Plots, Plantabomb LAX Airport in Los Angeles December 5, 2001, anti-abortion extremist Clayton Lee Wagner is arrested in a Kinko's while he was preparing to fax bomb threats to a mass list of abortion clinics. December 12, 2001, Jewish Defense League plot by Chairman Irv Rubin and follower Earl Krugel to blow up the King Fahd Mosque in Culver City, California and the office of Lebanese-American Congressman Daryl Issa foiled. December 22, 2001, British citizen and self-proclaimed Al-Qaeda member Richard Reid attempted to detonate the C-4 explosive PETN concealed in his shoes while on a flight from Paris to Miami. He was subdued by crew and passengers with the plane landing safely in Boston. 2004 Financial Buildings Plot – Al-Qaeda plan to bomb the International Monetary Fund, New York Stock Exchange, Citigroup and Prudential Buildings broken up after arrest of computer expert in Pakistan and plotters in Britain. 2004 Columbus Shopping Mall Bombing Plot – A loosely organized group of young men planned to carry out an attack on an unnamed shopping mall. September 11, 2006, a man rammed his car into a women's clinic that he thought was an abortion clinic and set it ablaze in Davenport, Iowa causing $20,000 worth of damage to the building. April 25, 2007, a bomb was left in a women's clinic in Austin, Texas but failed to explode. 2009-2009 New York Bomb Plot December 25, 2009, British and Nigerian citizen and self-described Al-Qaeda member Umar Farouk Abdulmutallab allegedly attempted to blow up Northwest Airlines Flight 253 in flight over Detroit by igniting his underpants which were filled with the C-4 explosive PETN. He has been indicted in a U.S. federal court. Charges include the attempted murder of 289 people. Several days later, Al-Qaeda's affiliate in Yemen and Saudi Arabia claimed responsibility for the attempted attack. Addressing America, the group threatened to "...come for you to slaughter." On January 24, 2010 an audio tape that U.S. intelligence believes is authentic was broadcast in which Osama bin Laden claimed responsibility for the attempted bombing. The intelligence officials expressed doubt about the veracity of bin Laden's claim. On October 12, 2011 Abdulmutallab pled guilty to all counts against him and read a statement to the court saying, I attempted to use an explosive device which in the U.S. law is a weapon of mass destruction, which I call a blessed weapon to save the lives of innocent Muslims, for U.S. use of weapons of mass destruction on Muslim populations in Afghanistan, Iraq, Yemen and beyond. May 1, 2010 2010 Times Square car bomb attempt and plot An attempted evening car bombing in crowded Times Square in New York City failed when a street vendor saw smoke emanating from an SUV and called police. The White House has blamed Turek e Taliban, the Pakistani Taliban, for the failed attack and said Faisal Shahzad, aged 30, an American of Pakistani origin who has been arrested in relation to the incident, was working for the group. In July 2010, the Pakistani Taliban released a video featuring Shahzad in which he urged other Muslims in the West to follow his example and to wage similar attacks. On May 3, Shahzad was arrested at Kennedy Airport as he was preparing to fly to Dubai. The device was described as crude and amateurish but potent enough to cause casualties. On May 13 the FBI raided several locations in the Northeast and arrested three on alleged immigration violations. Several suspects were arrested in Pakistan including the co-owner of a prominent catering firm used by the U.S. Embassy. On June 21 Shahzad pled guilty to 10 counts saying he created the bomb to force the U.S. military to withdraw troops and stop drone attacks in a number of Muslim countries. Shahzad said he chose the location to cause mass civilian casualties because the civilians elected the government that carried out the allegedly anti-Muslim policies. On October 4, 2010 Shahzad was sentenced to life in prison. During his sentencing, he threatened that, "...the defeat of the U.S. is imminent," and that, "...we will keep on terrorizing you until you leave our lands." Shahzad planned on detonating a second bomb in Times Square two weeks later. July 21, 2010, Brian Williams captured after shootout with California Highway Patrol with guns strapped on his body armor alleged to have confessed that he was on his way to kill workers at the American Civil Liberties Union and follow it up with an attack on Tides Center allegedly was angry with left-wing politics and inspired by conspiracy theories of Glenn Beck and hoped the attack would ignite a revolution. 
January 17, 2011, Spokane bombing attempt, a small pipe bomb in a backpack designed to be detonated by remote control and spread shrapnel in a specific direction was discovered during a Martin Luther King Day parade in Spokane, Washington. White supremacist Kevin Harfum is convicted and sentenced to 32 years in federal prison. April 8, 2013, letters believed to contain the poison ricin were sent to President Barack Obama and Mississippi Republican Senator Roger Wicker and a Mississippi justice official. Tests on the granular substance found in the letters tested positive for low-grade ricin. April 25, 2013, Jahar Sarnayev, the suspect in the Boston Marathon bombing, told investigators that he and his brother discussed using leftover explosives to attack Times Square. According to NYC Police Commissioner Raymond Kelly the plan was conceived after they attacked Boston and was foiled when their SUV ran out of gas as they tried to escape from the Boston Marathon bombing manhunt. January 15, 2015, Washington, D.C. U.S. Capitol terror attack stopped by FBI. Investigators say a 20-year-old Ohio man now in FBI custody wanted to set off pipe bombs at the U.S. Capitol as a way of supporting ISIS. Federal authorities identified the man as Christopher Lee Cornell, also known as Raheel Maris Ubeda. Cornell, who lives in the Cincinnati area, allegedly told an FBI informant they should wage jihad and showed his plans for bombing the Capitol and shooting people, according to a criminal complaint filed in federal court. The FBI said Cornell expressed his desire to support the Islamic State. Authorities say Cornell was arrested Wednesday after buying two semi-automatic rifles and about 600 rounds of ammunition, but an FBI agent says the public was never in danger. May 3, 2015, Garland, Texas. Elton Simpson and Nadir Sufi, roommates from North Phoenix, Arizona, were killed by a security guard when they started shooting at a building holding a Muhammad cartoon contest sponsored by Stop Islamization of America. A school security officer helping with security at the event was shot in the leg. October 22-26, 2018, at least 12 packages containing pipe bombs were mailed within the U.S. Postal Service system to several prominent critics of U.S. President Donald Trump, including various Democratic Party politicians Hillary Clinton, Barack Obama, Joe Biden, Eric Holder, Debbie Wasserman Schultz, Maxine Waters, Cory Booker, actor Robert De Niro, billionaire investor George Soros, former CIA director John O. Brennan, and former director of national intelligence James Clapper. Topic. Alleged and proven plots November 1864, planned by Confederate Lieutenant Colonel Robert Martin and the Copperheads organization Sons of Liberty to attack New York City and disrupt elections collapsed when the Sons of Liberty backed out upon seeing large numbers of Union troops. February 28, 1865 Dahlgren Affair, alleged plot by Union General Judson Kilpatrick to burn down Richmond, Virginia and kill Confederate President Jefferson Davis and his cabinet. Allegations based on papers recovered by a 13-year-old member of the Confederate Home Guard. The authenticity of the papers have been a matter of dispute. January 1940, the FBI shuts down the Christian Front after discovering that its members were arming themselves for a plot to murder Jews, communists, and a dozen congressmen," and establishing a government modeled after Nazi Germany. March 31, 1943, Clarence Cull arrested and charged with attempting to assassinate President Franklin D. Roosevelt by suicide bombing. Cull blamed Roosevelt for lost convoys of merchant ships. November 9, 1995, Oklahoma Constitutional Militia members arrested while in the planning stages for bombings of Southern Poverty Law Center, gay bars and abortion clinics. January 1, 1996, members of the Viper Team Militia are arrested after they caught surveying government buildings in Arizona. July 13, 1996, John J. Ford, 47, of Bellport, Long Island, a former court officer and president of the Long Island UFO. Network, and Joseph Mazzuchelli plotted to poison local politicians with radium and shoot them if that did not work. They believed the government was covering up knowledge of UFO landings. November 11, 1996, seven members of the Mountaineer Militia are arrested in a plot to blow up the FBI Fingerprint Records Center in West Virginia. 
July 4, 1997, members of the splinter militia group the Third Continental Congress are arrested while planning attacks on military bases which they believed were being used to train United Nations troops to attack U.S. citizens. July 30, 1997, two men who were planning to bomb the New York City subway the next day arrested. A resident of their apartment informed police after he overheard the men discussing the plot. March 18, 1998, members of the North American Militia are arrested in plot to bomb federal buildings in Michigan, a television station and an interstate highway intersection. December 5, 1999, members of the San Joaquin Militia are arrested on charges of plotting to bomb critical infrastructure locations in hopes of sparking an insurrection. The leaders of the group pled guilty to charges of plotting to kill a federal judge. December 8, 1999, the leader of the Southeastern States Alliance Militia Group is arrested in plot to bomb energy faculties with the goal of causing power outages in Florida and Georgia. March 9, 2000, the former leader of the Texas Militia is arrested in a plot to attack the federal building in Houston. February 8, 2002, two members of Project 7 are arrested plotting to kill judges and law enforcement officials in order to kick off a revolution. May 8, 2002, Jose Padilla, accused by John Ashcroft of plotting to attack the United States with a dirty bomb, declared as an enemy combatant, and denied habeas corpus. No material evidence has been produced to support the allegation. July 26, 2002-2002 White supremacist terror plot – Two white supremacists were convicted of conspiring to start a race war by bombing landmarks associated with Jews and blacks. September 3, 2002, an Idaho Mountain Militia boy's plot to kill a judge and a police officer and break a friend out of jail is uncovered. April 24, 2003, William Krar is charged for his part in the Tyler Poison Gas Plot, a white supremacist-related plan. A sodium cyanide bomb was seized with at least 100 other bombs, bomb components, machine guns, and 500,000 rounds of ammunition. He faces up to 10 years in prison. May 1, 2003, Ayman Ferris pleads guilty to providing material support to Al-Qaeda and plotting to bring down the Brooklyn Bridge by cutting through cables with blowtorches. He had been working as a double for the FBI since March, but in October was sentenced to 20 years in prison. August 31, 2005-2005 Los Angeles bomb plot, Kevin James, Hamad Samana, Gregory Patterson, and Lever Washington were indicted on charges to wage war against the U.S. government through terrorism in California. The men planned attacks against Jewish institutions and American military locations in Los Angeles during the Yom Kippur holiday. February 21, 2006, the Toledo terror plot where three men were accused of conspiring to wage a holy war against the United States, supply help to the terrorist in Iraq, and threatening to kill the U.S. President. June 23, 2006, the Miami bomb plot to attack the Sears Tower where seven men were arrested after an FBI agent infiltrated a group while posing as an Al-Qaeda member. No weapons or other materials were found. On May 12, 2009 after two mistrials due to hung juries five men were convicted and one acquitted on charges related to the plot. Narsil Batiste, the group's ringleader, was convicted on four charges, the only defendant to be convicted on all four charges brought against the defendants. July 7, 2006, three suspects arrested in Lebanon for plotting to blow up a Hudson River tunnel and flood the New York Financial District. November 29, 2006, Demetrius Van Crocker a white supremacist from rural Tennessee was sentenced to 30 years in prison for attempting to acquire sarin nerve gas and C4 explosives that he planned to use to destroy government buildings. December 8, 2006, Derek Sharif, 22, a Muslim convert who talked about his desire to wage jihad against civilians was charged in a plot to set off four hand grenades in garbage cans December 22 at the Cherryvale Mall in Rockford, Illinois. March 5, 2007, a Rikers Island inmate offered to pay an undercover police officer posing as a hit man to behead New York City Police Commissioner Raymond Kelly and bomb police headquarters in retaliation for the controversial police shooting of Sean Bell. The suspect wanted the bombing to be considered a terrorist act. May 1, 2007, five members of a self-styled Birmingham, Alabama area anti-immigration militia were arrested for planning a machine gun attack on Mexicans. May 7, 2007, Fort Dix attack plot. 
Six men inspired by jihadist videos arrested in a failed homegrown terrorism plot to kill soldiers. Plot unravels when Circuit City clerk becomes suspicious of the DVDs the men had created and report it to authorities who place an informant in the group. In October 2008 one man pleaded guilty to charges related to the plot. On December 22, 2008 five other men were convicted with conspiracy to kill American soldiers but were acquitted of attempted murder. Dritton, Shane and Elgevier Duca were sentenced to life in prison. June 3, 2007, John F. Kennedy International Airport terror plot. Four men indicted in plot to blow up jet fuel supply tanks at JFK Airport and a 40-mile connecting pipeline. One suspect is a U.S. citizen and one, Abdul Qadir, a former member of parliament in Guyana. The airport was targeted because one of the suspects saw arms shipments and missiles being shipped to Israel from that locale. In a recorded conversation one of the suspects allegedly told an informant that, "...anytime you hit Kennedy, it is the most hurtful thing to the United States. To hit John F. Kennedy, wow. They love JFK, he's like the man." Plot unraveled when a person from law enforcement was recruited. On June 29, 2010 Abdul Noor pled guilty to material support charges. Due to health reasons Karim Ibrahim was removed from the case and will be tried separately. On August 2 Russell M. DeFridis and Abdul Qadir were convicted for their role in the plot. March 26, 2008, Michael S. Gorby who was detained in January 2008 for carrying a loaded shotgun two blocks from the Capitol building has been charged planning to set off a bomb after a device containing can of gunpowder duct taped to a box of shotgun shells and a bottle containing buckshot or BB pellets was found in the pickup truck he was driving. The pickup truck was moved to a government parking lot where for a three-week period the device inside it went unnoticed. Michael Gorby gets 22 years prison, but he insisted that police planted weapons. October 27, 2008, federal agents claimed to thwarted a plot by two white power skinheads to target an African-American high school and kill 88 blacks and decapitate 14 more the numbers 88 and 14 are symbolic to white supremacists and although expecting to fail try to assassinate Barack Obama. May 20, 2009, 2009 New York City bomb plot Three U.S. citizens and one Haitian from Newburgh, New York were arrested in a plot to bomb a Riverdale temple and a Riverdale Jewish center in the Bronx, New York City in an alleged homegrown terrorist plot. It was also alleged that they planned to shoot down military planes operating out of Stewart Air National Guard base also in Newburgh. One of the suspects whose parents are from Afghanistan was said to be unhappy that many Muslim people were being killed in Afghanistan and Pakistan by the United States military forces." On October 18, 2010, the four were convicted on most of the charges brought against them. On June 29, 2011 three of the men were sentenced to 25 years imprisonment by a judge who criticized the government's handling of the case. A 2014 award-winning HBO documentary about the four, The Newberg Sting, claimed that it was a clear case of entrapment and an egregious miscarriage of justice. September 2009 New York City subway and United Kingdom plot, Najibullah Zazi of Denver was indicted on charges of trying to build and detonate a weapon of mass destruction by purchasing hydrogen peroxide, acetone and other chemicals. He and two others allegedly planned to detonate the homemade explosives on the New York City subway system. On February 22, 2010 Zazi pled guilty to conspiracy to use weapons of mass destruction, conspiracy to commit murder in a foreign country and providing material support for a terrorist organization. Zazi said he was recruited by Al-Qaeda as part of a martyrdom plan. Zazi agreed to cooperate with authorities and has told them that the groups plan to walk into the Times Square and Grand Central stations with backpack bombs at rush hour and then choose which subway lines to attack. Several days later ADIs Medanyanan and Zarain Ahmedze high school classmates of Zazi were indicted and pled not guilty to charges of conspiracy to use weapons of mass destruction, conspiracy to commit murder in a foreign country and providing material support for a terrorist organization. On April 12 a fourth man was arrested in Pakistan. On April 23 prosecutors said that two senior Al-Qaeda officials who were reportedly later killed in drone attacks ordered the attacks and Zarain Ahmedze pleaded guilty to plot-related charges. On July 7 five others were indicted including Al-Qaeda leader Adnan Shukrajuma, and it was alleged the United Kingdom was also a target of the plot. 
While in Pakistan, Zazi, Ahmadzai, and Medanyanin were allegedly recruited and directed by Shukrajuma, a former Florida student who is designated as one of the FBI's most wanted terrorists, to conduct a terrorist attack in the U.S. On August 6, new charges were brought against Medanyanin and four others, including Shukrajuma. Medanyanin pleaded not guilty. August, September 2009, on September 24, William Boyd and Heseen Sharifi charged with conducting reconnaissance of the Marine Corps base at Quantico, Virginia and obtaining armor-piercing ammunition with the intent to attack Americans." Boyd, two of his sons and several other suspects had been charged on international terrorism charges in August, but at the time there was no indication that they wanted to plot a United States attack. An audio tape of Boyd decrying the U.S. military, discussing the honor of martyrdom, and bemoaning the struggle of Muslims was played at an August hearing. It is the first case of a ring of homegrown terrorists having specific targets. September 24, 2009, Michael Finton, Talib Islam a 29-year-old man from Illinois charged with trying to kill federal employees by detonating a car bomb at the federal building in Springfield, Illinois. Charges based on FBI sting operation. He is said to idolize American-born Taliban soldier John Walker Lind. September 24, 2009, Hossam Mar Hussain Smadi a 19-year-old illegal immigrant from Jordan charged with trying the bomb the 60-story Fountain Place office tower in Dallas, Texas. Charges are based on FBI sting operation in which agents posed as members of an Al-Qaeda sleeper cell. January 7, 2010, ADI's Medanyanin an alleged 2009 New York City subway plotter attempts a suicide attack by intentionally crashing his car on the Whitestone Bridge in New York City. He is indicted for this on July 7. Medanyanin has since been charged for his role in an Al-Qaeda plot to conduct coordinated suicide bombings on New York's subway system. May 2010, Paul Rockwood Jr. a meteorologist who took official weather observations and his pregnant wife Nancy from King Salmon, Alaska compiled a list of 20 targets, including members of the military and media and had moved to the operational phase of their plan pled guilty to lying to FBI about the list and making false statements to the FBI. Under a plea agreement Mr. Rockwood will serve eight years in prison and three years probation while Ms. Rockwood will serve probation. Motive was revenge for alleged desecration of Islam. September 20, 2010, Sami Samir Hassoun, 22, a Lebanese citizen living in Chicago, was charged with one count each of attempted use of a weapon of mass destruction and attempted use of an explosive device after placing a backpack with what he thought was a bomb near Wrigley Field. Alleged plot was foiled by FBI informant. Hassoun discussed other ideas for mass destruction attacks with informant. October 27, 2010, Farouk Ahmed, 34, a naturalized U.S. citizen indicted for conspiracy to bomb four Washington metro stations with people he thought were al-Qaeda. November 26, 2010, Mohammed Osman Mohammed a 19-year-old Somali-American is alleged to have attempted a car bombing at a Christmas tree lighting ceremony in Portland, Oregon. The device was a dud created by the FBI. Motive is reported to be jihad. On January 31, 2013 a jury found Muhammad guilty of the charge of trying to use a weapon of mass destruction. December 8, 2010, Antonio Martinez, also known as Muhammad Hussein arrested after a sting operation in an alleged plot to bomb a military recruiting center in Catonsville, Maryland. The 21-year-old suspect is an American who converted to Islam. The suspect was reported to be upset that the military continues to kill Muslims. December 21, 2010, Internet radio broadcaster Hal Turner sentenced to 33 months in prison after he published the work addresses and photographs of three judges who had upheld gun control laws and advocated for their assassination. February 24, 2011, Khalid Ali M. Aldazari a 20-year-old Saudi Arabian student arrested for building bombs to use in alleged terrorist attacks. Targets allegedly were home of George W. Bush, hydroelectric dams, nuclear power plants, nightclubs and the homes of soldiers who were formerly stationed at the Abu Ghraib prison. In Aldazari's journal he wrote he was inspired by the speeches of Osama bin Laden. Alleged plot uncovered when supplier noticed suspicious purchases. May 11, 2011, in the 2011 Manhattan terrorism plot, Ahmed Farhani resident of Queens, New York and native of Algeria and Mohamed Mamdo aged 20 also from Queens and Moroccan native arrested in a lone wolf plot against a New York synagogue that had yet to be chosen. 
It also alleged that they hoped to attack the Empire State Building. The pair were arrested after buying two Browning semi-automatic pistols, one Smith & Wesson revolver, ammunition and one grenade. The pair disguised themselves as Jewish temple goers and pretended to pray. The suspects were said to be committed to violent jihad. June 23, 2011, Abu Khalid Abdul Latif and Wali Mujahi of Long Beach, California are arrested on charges of buying machine guns and grenades and conspiring to attack a federal building housing a military entrance processing station in Seattle, Washington. Plot was uncovered by informant. Motive was to send message in protest of U.S. action abroad. On April 8, 2013 Wali Mujahi apologized and was sentenced to 17 years for his role in the plot. July 27, 2011, AWOL U.S. Army private, and conscientious objector, Nasser Jason Abdo from Garland, Texas was arrested in an alleged plot against Fort Hood, Texas. Materials for up to two bombs were found with jihadist materials in Abdo's motel room. Investigation began when owner of a local gun store called police after becoming suspicious when Abdo asked questions indicating he did not know about the items he was purchasing. September 28, 2011, Reswin Ferdows, a U.S. citizen, was indicted for allegedly plotting to use remote-controlled aircraft carrying explosives to bomb the Pentagon and the U.S. Capitol. He also allegedly planned to hire people to shoot at people fleeing the Pentagon. Ferdows was said to be motivated by al Qaeda videos and the alleged plot was uncovered by an FBI sting operation. In July 2012 he pleaded guilty to plotting an attack on the Pentagon and U.S. Capitol and attempting to provide material support to terrorists. Under a plea bargain, he was sentenced to 17 years in prison and then 10 years of supervised release. October 11, 2011, Operation Red Coalition alleged plot that was conceived, sponsored and was directed from Iran to assassinate the Saudi Arabian ambassador to the United States Adil al-Jubir with a bomb and bomb the Saudi and Israeli embassies in Washington, D.C. It is not known if Iranian Supreme Leader Ayatollah Ali Khamenei or President Mahmoud Ahmadinejad had knowledge of the plot. The alleged plot was disrupted by an FBI and DIA investigation. The investigation began in May 2011 when an Iranian-American approached a DIA informant seeking the help of a Mexican drug cartel to assassinate the Saudi ambassador. Iran has denied the allegations. October to November 2011, Georgia terrorist plot four elderly men from a Georgia militia arrested for plotting to buy ricin in preparation for an attack they claimed would save the Constitution. They allegedly discussed blowing up IRS and ATF buildings, dispensing ricin from a plane over Atlanta and other cities, and assassinating un-American politicians. Informant used to break up alleged plot. November 20, 2011, Jose Pimentel, aged 27, an American citizen and a convert to Islam from New York City arrested and accused of being the process of building pipe bombs and one hour away from his building his first bomb to target post offices police cars and U.S. military personnel returning from abroad in New York City and Bayonne, New Jersey. Was said to be a follower of the late al-Qaeda leader Anwar al-Awlaki. The FBI did not consider Pimentel who was said to be radicalized via the Internet by enough of a threat to investigate but NYC police considered him a 2 on a threat scale of 1 to 5. January 7, 2012, Sami Osmakash a naturalized American from Kosovo arrested in plot to create mayhem in Tampa, Florida by car bombing, hostage taking and exploding a suicide belt. Alleged bomb targets included by night clubs in the Ybor City, a bar, and the operations center of the sheriff's office and South Tampa businesses. Osmakosh allegedly told an FBI undercover agent, We all have to die, so why not die the Islamic way? Osmakosh pled not guilty on February 8. 2012 February 17, Amin El Khalifi a Moroccan man from Alexandria, Virginia arrested in alleged suicide bombing plot of U.S. Capitol was arrested was a result of FBI sting operation. As a result of a plea agreement El Khalifi was sentenced to 30 years in prison on September 14. May 1, 2012 to five self-described anarchists were arrested in an alleged plot to blow up a bridge in Cuyahoga Valley National Park in Brecksville, Ohio. The group was being monitored as part of an FBI undercover operation and had considered other plots previously. One of the suspects expressed a desire to cause financial damage to companies while avoiding casualties. 
August 27, 2012, four noncommissioned officers from Fort Stewart in Georgia, along with five other men, were charged in an alleged plot to poison an apple orchard and blow up a dam in Washington state, seize control of Fort Stewart, set off explosives in a park in Savannah, Georgia, and assassinate President Barack Obama. The alleged plot was on behalf of the fear militia for the long-term purpose of overthrowing the government. 2012 October 17, Mohammad Reswanal Asan Nafis age 21 arrested in plot to bomb the Manhattan office of the Federal Reserve Bank on behalf of our beloved Sheikh Osama bin Laden. Motive was to destroy the economy and possibly force cancellation of the presidential election. Suspect who has a student visa is a Bangladeshi national who come to the U.S. to launch a terrorist attack. Arrest was result a joint FBI New York City police sting operation. Suspect was pulling detonator on disabled 1,000-pound van bomb when arrested. On August 9, 2013 Nafis was sentenced to 30 years in prison. Prior to his sentencing Nafis wrote a letter apologizing to the people of America and New York for his actions which he said were caused by personal and family problems and said he is now pro-American. November 29, 2012, Reyes Alam Qazi and his brother Shahriyar Alam Qazi of Florida naturalized citizens of Pakistani descent arrested for being in the aspirational stages of a plot to attack New York City. Reyes Alam Qazi is alleged be inspired by Al-Qaeda and of trying to contact terrorists abroad. On June 11, 2015 Reyes and Shahriyar were sentenced to 35 and 20 years respectively for the plot and attacking federal officials while in custody. June 19, 2013, two middle-aged upstate New York men Scott Crawford and Eric J. Fate arrested by FBI in alleged plot to target a political figure reported to be President Obama and a Muslim group deemed enemies of Israel by constructing and using an X-ray gun that was described by the FBI as useful and functional. Obama was believed by the pair to be allowing Muslims into the country without background checks. Investigation was launched when a synagogue and the Ku Klux Klan whom Crawford was a member of told authorities that Crawford tried to recruit them to take part in the alleged plot. December 13, 2013, Terry Lee Lawin, an avionics technician, was arrested for attempting to bomb the Wichita Mid-Continent Airport. A Muslim convert inspired by Anwar al-Awlaki, he is alleged to have spent several months planning a suicide attack with a car load of explosives. 2014, Brandon Orlando Baldwin and Elijahwan Ali Davis allegedly plotted to kill St. Louis County, Missouri prosecuting attorney Robert McCulloch and Ferguson, Missouri Police Chief Tom Jackson as well as bomb the Gateway Arch in reaction to the shooting of Michael Brown. The suspects were caught as a result of an undercover operation. March 26, 2015, Hassan R. Edmonds, an Illinois National Guardsman, and his cousin, Jonas M. Edmonds, arrested in an alleged terrorist plot against a northern Illinois military base. The alleged plot involved Hassan leaving the country and Jones using Hassan's uniform to gain access. Motive was to bring the flames of war to the heart of America. Alleged plot broken up by sting operation. April 2, 2015, two women from Queens, New York, 28-year-old Noel Valences and 31-year-old Asia Siddiqui, arrested on charges of trying to detonate explosives in the U.S. They had purchased propane tanks. It is believed to be first case of a women-only conceived terror plot in the U.S. Suspected busted by sting operation. Siddiqui alleged to have al-Qaeda contact. On May 7, the two pled not guilty. April 10, 2015, the FBI arrested 63-year-old Robert Rankin Doggart, of Signal Mountain, Tennessee, who ran as a congressional candidate in 2014. He was wiretapped explaining plans to raise a militia to burn down a mosque, school and cafeteria and gun down Muslims in an enclave called Islamburg in New York. He planned to amass M4 carbines, pistols, Molotov cocktails and machetes, saying, We will offer our lives as collateral to prove our commitment to our God and, we shall be warriors who inflict horrible numbers of casualties upon the enemies, and, if it gets down to the machete, we will cut them to shreds. He has a Ph.D. from a diploma mill and an ordination from an ordination mill. He pled guilty on May 15, 2015. June 17, 2015, Farid Mumuni, 21 of Staten Island and Munther Omar Saleh, 20 of Queens arrested for allegedly trying to conspire to assist ISIS in committing an attack in the New York area. 
Both suspects allegedly charged at law enforcement trying to arrest them with a knife. July 3-5, 2015, FBI. Director James Comey said his agency disrupted multiple July 4 weekend terror plots. July 13, 2015, Alexander Chicolo, 23, of Adams, Massachusetts a son of a Boston police captain arrested in plot to attack a state college and broadcast executions of students on the Internet. Suspect who was turned in by his father is said to be inspired by ISIS and reportedly characterized America as Satan and disgusting. Chicolo has guns and possible bomb-making equipment. August 22, 2015, Kevin Norton, 18, and James Stumbo, 27 of Iowa were arrested in a plot to shoot up the 2015 Pokémon World Championships. The two posted status updates and images of their weaponry on social media, which were noticed by various Pokémon fans who treated them as supposed threats against the tournament. The two were arrested on charges of unlicensed possession of firearms and ammunition. The weapons recovered were a recently purchased Remington shotgun, an R-15, a hunting knife and several hundred rounds of ammunition. October 14, 2016, Curtis Wayne Allen, 49, Patrick Eugene Stein, 47, and Gavin Wayne Wright, 49 are arrested in Garden City, Kansas after an eight-month-long investigation conducted by the FBI finds that the men were plotting to use explosives to kill an estimated 120 persons at an apartment complex inhibited by Somali immigrants. The men claimed allegiance to a far-right nationalist group called the Crusaders. As of mid-February 2017, the men have yet to be put on trial. Topic. See also Crime in the United States Domestic terrorism in the United States Islamic terrorism Jihadist extremism in the United States Left-wing terrorism List of incidents of political violence in Washington, D.C. List of terrorist incidents in New York City List of terrorist incidents in Seattle Right-wing terrorism Symbionese Liberation Army Ted Kaczynski Terrorism in Canada United States and state terrorism United States and state-sponsored terrorism Topic. References Topic. External links Southern Poverty Law Center List of U.S. Ecoterror Incidents 1984-2002 Anti-Defamation League's Criminal Proceedings, a timeline of U.S. Terror Cases Profiles of Individual Radicalization in the United States Interactive database of over 1,800 profiles of individuals radicalized by ideologies in the United States since 1948.